Good morning, folks. We've got weather events, top science news, a climate titan backing into a corner, and we go over some visuals to help us understand last night's video and yesterday's top story. But we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun with a solid eruption visible bottom left near the incoming limb. While the flaring has been slowly on the rise, we haven't seen anything significant. The flare for this eruption was likely still behind the limb. The eruption jumped off quickly, but it was actually just one of three. It began early yesterday as a stealth CME lifted off near the equator, and in the wake of its coronal disruption, a filament shot off the north, also behind the limb, and then the southern eruption, which is quite large as you can see. These areas are turning into face Earth this weekend and into next week. The eruption this morning, by the way, is aimed at Venus. Of course, we are awaiting the impact of this coronal hole stream as well, and monitoring the plasma filament dancing in behind it. Let's go to GO-16 and a gorgeous shot of mid-level water vapor return and the lightning overlay. That's Henri out in the Atlantic and it's heading north for impact towards New England. Will be important to watch the progress over the weekend. Interesting story about Comet Atlas. It appears to have the same path as the great 1844 comet and with parts of it surviving much longer than others, they know the original comet was partially strong and partially weak, hinting that it's a survivor from the last pass. Folks, I recently made commentary about the importance of using multiple bands to view the heavens. Some radio bands will show a faint ring of material and not the burning star in the center. Sometimes to see the big picture, you have to combine a number of wavelengths. This article from NRAO is a good explanation for why this is the case, with some excellent examples as well. Super cool simulation out too on the Magellanic Stream and its tail after impact with the Milky Way Galaxy's circumgalactic medium. Easter egg top observers, plasma instabilities around the outside come in the interchange form which we saw earlier this week, a bit of the Kelvin Helmholtz instability as well after the initial Raleigh Taylor instabilities of the expansion near the shock wave. Nice to see all those coming back to say hello. Up next, a rare stepping outside the natural sciences realm because of the importance of this one. It was recently confirmed that the self-health scientific results, nutrition, exercise, vitamins, they're often held back, changed, or wiped completely, especially when the funder of the study has a stake in the medical intervention therapy. Interestingly, the governments around the world seem only to bend to their will, and while this is not a new theme, it is a confirmation of something we've heard a number of times, it is always a slap in the face and good to remember, they don't really care about us. If we may speak to Michael Mann for a moment, the memories are still fresh of my days at Penn State where the molding of my meteorological frustrations began. This paper is pretty much what you can infer from the title, they are on the run. The uncertainties and biases and ignored peer-reviewed literature are catching up to climate science, even if it hasn't caught up to the propaganda in the mainstream news just yet. And as we like to remind everyone, pollution is still bad and so the premise of environmental action is somewhat legitimate here. But it is an effort to take embarrassment and pat the field on the back, re-motivate it. But for the rest of us, we've been able to smell this fear since 2016 or so. Now last but not least, yesterday's top story really could have been better described. And only about half of you caught our video breaking down the paper and its three big revelations last night. So let's do this one more time and hopefully the full weight of this bombshell comes through. The thermosphere temperatures are pretty much entirely controlled by the sun and geomagnetic conditions. The CO2 that was supposed to be cooling up there is not. No signal is seen, but we know the CO2 is in fact up there. So the first revelation is the solar control where they figured it was CO2 and atmospheric chemistry. Incorrect. The second revelation comes when you apply this to the polar summer mesospheric echo changes of late. Some have blamed that CO2, but that won't work now. It's extra electrification since electrified ice crystals and dust are the progenitors of those echoes. And third, if it's not cooling up there, its atmospheric forcing power needs to be diminished down here. And just as was the case up there, the answer to how to fix the story down here is the sun and geomagnetic conditions. There, now you don't need to go watch last night's video. We greatly appreciate your support. We're watching the sun for more eruptions. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.